In today's episode, we're going to be talking about life insurance. Enjoy. Welcome to the Age of Jeremy. My name is Jeremy Quintanilla. I am the host of this podcast. If you don't know who I am, I am the CFO and co-founder of 3 Tour Academy, the CEO and co-founder of Age of Jeremy, the CFO of a a product that's coming to you called Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto. Make sure that you head on over to MerlinCrypto.com and get on the wait list. You do not want to miss out on what we are doing with Merlin. It's a one-stop shop for you to see all of your coins, your crypto coins, that is, or cryptocurrencies. And it also allows you to see your daily gains and losses, 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 and you can set up an exit strategy and be notified when your currencies are moving so you can go in to the respective exchanges and sell those coins. You can't sell from the app yet. Um, that will be coming in another version. Um, if you want to know more about Merlin, follow us on Twitter at get Merlin crypto, follow us on Instagram at Merlin underscore crypto, follow us on LinkedIn at get Merlin crypto and follow us on, I think that those are the places, those are the three places. Oh, on threads at Merlin underscore crypto. It's the same as Instagram. And I hope you're using threads should always be using new social medias. that's coming out that what you heard right there, if you heard that drop, it was a USB, it was USB C to USB A converter that I need to make sure that I don't lose because oh Jesus dropped it again. So that I don't lose it because I need to take it on my trip. We are heading out to Connecticut to the lake house. We are going to be doing some board meeting stuff, hanging out on the water, talking about some of the businesses that I own, talking to investors for helping us get those businesses up and running. Um, and if you follow me on social media, you can follow me on age of Jeremy, except on Twitter, it's at age of Jeremy Q. Um, and I love talking to people through Snapchat. So if you want me to respond back to you, the best place to do that is going to be on Snapchat. In fact, I'm going to snap while I talk about what I'm going to talk about next. And what I'm going to talk about next is our seven day free trial for the three T warrior Academy. You can get coach JVs or CJVs revolutionary 120 day challenge. You can start it for free and you can get crypto courses in there on how crypto works. I teach a book club. I teach business essentials. We have an Airbnb course and we do have our new freedom asset or freedom insurance group. That is a partnership of CJV's business. Just hit the mic. CJV's business. Sorry, I'm posting that on Snapchat while we're on this. I guess all we are is social media. So you can check out that seven day free trial on 3D Warrior Academy, Coach JV's 120 day challenge. You can get the crypto courses. I teach a book club. We're going to be reading about how to become your own banker um, by someone with the last name Nash. I can never remember the first name. And we're going to be having our Airbnb course in there. We have affiliate stuff in there. We have CJV's wealth pillars, and one of those is insurance. So there's all kinds of stuff going on. Also, the other thing that I did want to mention is on my Instagram, um, I'm starting to uh, brand out the Q Consolidated business. And my first venture into doing that was creating up a channel called Q Consolidated. You can join that channel on my Instagram at Age of Jeremy. And that's where I create more transparency with all of you, where I show you all the stuff that I'm going doing all the stuff that I'm working on. Um, because again, my life, I would like to be transparent so you can see, uh, all the things that I've been doing to get to where I'm going. And one of those things that we're going to be talking about today is essentially life insurance. So I don't think there's anything else that I need to mention. Um, oh, age of radio, make sure that you follow us on the Facebook group, age, uh, addicted to podcasting. Uh, there's like 500 people that are part of that Facebook group. We have a discord for age of radio. That's got like, I don't know, 26 people and half of them are the people that work. <laughs> for age of radio check out twitter age of radio we have tons of podcasts we'll be really focusing on some of those things that we're doing within um age of radio here soon um, but what i wanted to talk today was about q financial and the things that i wanted to do with finance um so i'm going to talk about those right now so essentially when i was in school 
when I was going getting my uh, bachelor's degree in accounting and I have a bachelor's degree in finance and I have a master's in business administration. When I was doing all of that, one of my main goals was to go off and do my own um, finance stuff through, say, a hedge fund or through a chain, I'm sorry, through high frequency trading. That was really, really popular around the time that I was getting done with my um, schooling. And eventually I would still like to build all of those types of things because that's where my passion is. Um, my passion is also in teaching and learning. And that's one of the things that I love about 3 2 War Academy. But one of the other things is is that we uh, one thing that I'm learning that I hope that you guys learn uh, on your journey to be an entrepreneur is to make sure that you hire people and you train those people, get them the correct skill set, and then have them do the stuff so you can leverage yourself. And so one of the things that we talk about a lot is leverage labor. And so I'm not talking from an academic point point or about capitalism or labor and this I'm just talking about from a pure business standpoint is that whether whatever you are doing you need to leverage labor to create more arms for you um, when we get into capitalism and Marxism and communism and those things then we can talk about like the profit of it but let's just talk about people working together um, and you can't do everything yourself and that's one of the things that I have failed at multiple times in my career is not realizing that I can't do everything. And one of two things need to happen. One, I need to say no to more things. Or two, I need to create more people that can do some of the things that I can do. Um, because I created myself as a commodity in a lot of situations. And the fact is that I'm not one of a kind, obviously, so I'm not really the commodity here. So I need to get other people because that's how you advance resources and advance skill and advance businesses is by having a bunch of labor. And so that is one of the biggest things that I am working on this year by finding key places where we need to have extra labor and then investing in those pieces. The most important thing that any business, there's two things that are the most important things that people can do in their businesses, understand their customers and understand their people and never give up on those two things. And what I mean by that is always make sure that those are the two things that matter. Those are literally the only two things that fully, fully matter inside of a business above profit, above anything. It's the people. And those people come in two places. They come in team members or employees. Um, I like the word team members, but I mean, theoretically, they're employees. Um, and two, the customers. And so the closer you can get with those two people, those two groups of people, the better your business will be. And one of those places that you need to do that is in making sure that you're retaining, leading, teaching and creating a fantastic skill set. Now, I'm not I don't spend a lot of time reading the the learning literature from an enterprise or a corporate standpoint. So, I don't know exactly what is going on all the time in those areas or where we're at in that because the way that I feel about it is we don't have enough focus on those types of things, but I think that that's an incorrect assessment because of the fact that I am not spending my time in the literature and I'm not spending my time in those communities like I should if those are really the things that we need to be doing more of. Um, I think that those, the, 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 the learning and development like the chief learning officer is one of the most important roles or the chief people officer or the chief, administra chief administration officer and they have those people underneath them. So that's really where I'm working on over the next like couple of years and five years and getting really, really strong at that um, because I cannot continue to do the things that I'm doing. And I've also noticed that when I did empower people, especially like Ruthie, who is on um, our Age of Radio um, team, um, she posts all the posts that you see on the Age of Radio Twitter. So head on over to the Age of Radio Twitter if you're listening to this and you know what I'm talking about. And so once I taught her and I empowered her to do that, she did that. So then I found out, found a way to pay her more. And then I'm going to continue to do that so that she can continue to grow and do the things that I need her to do. And so that is one of the key pieces of, um, key pieces of, I guess, items that I'm really, really focusing on. And one of the key pieces of things that I really, really enjoy, um, where I get pulled and doing things that I don't enjoy. Like one of the things that I hands down, while I like the theory of law, I do not in any way whatsoever enjoy writing fucking contracts or writing ridiculous legal documents. It is not something that I enjoy. It's not something that I want to do, but at the end of the day, I, if I have to do it, I will, because I'm doing that right now because I'm trying to move certain things forward. But as soon as I can have an assistant that can do all the technical communication shit for me, hands down, that is what that person is going to do. And that is one of my key pieces of people that I'm trying to implement this year is an executive, full executive assistant for me. Even if it's a part-time executive assistant, 
and that I'm, or a personal assistant or whatever the hell you want to call it, whatever I'm going to have them doing, it's going to be amazing stuff. I'm going to teach them how to do it. I'm going to figure out a way to freaking pay them a good amount of money because that I need that those extra hands for those types of things, because those things can be done by someone else. And you or me as the entrepreneur or the business owner, there are better things that we could be doing by doing more of this type of stuff, focusing on growing the brand, focusing on the strategic objective of what we're doing, making sure that people are in place to get numbers. And so that's where, when we think about um, where resources go, where a lot of resources go in business, but that's how you create that scalability of a business and that growth of that business or that organization. And all of those things can be implemented just real quick. And I don't want to go off to a full side tangent here, but all of those things can be implemented within your household or your family organization as well. So I just want to make that very, very clear that the most productive life from my thinking, from my journaling is found inside of families being run or grouped and ran like an organization. Now, are there some caveats that need to be said about that? Absolutely. Because each individual person is, of course, an individual person. And every single person's emotions, thoughts, dreams, goals need to be heard and understood inside of those things. So, um, but that being said, what I wanted to also talk about was insurance because Q financial. So Q financial is a financial accounting arm that I have. We have one person that helps me out. It's tones and FT tones. You can find them on Twitter, whatever. Um, not whatever you can go and find him on Twitter. I think he's on Instagram. I don't know where he's at. Um, and YouTube, I think he has a YouTube channel, NFT tones. Well, I know he has a YouTube channel. I guess my point is, I don't know if he put stuff on that YouTube channel. He should be because he would probably have a bunch of followers by now if he had stayed consistent. So tones, if you're listening to this, be more consistent with that. Um, that being said, so I have that person. And so there is, uh, financial services to me it includes a couple of things. It includes financial services like investing. It includes insurance services like say insurance. And it includes, um, to now those can go in different levels of like wealth, but I'm just talking about basic. So financial services, um, insurance services, um, and to some extent family governance services, but that's what I meant by like the wealth part of it. Um, and then bookkeeping and tax services or, or, and, or CFO services. And so those are the things that we're trying to build. And so I created my investment thesis around that because I, I created an investment thesis, um, and I'm still working some of it out, but part of that is that financial service piece. And so when the opportunity to sell life insurance came up, I jumped on it because life insurance as an investment vehicle and just life insurance as a term insurance vehicle has always been fascinating for me because it's the mitigation, maybe not the mitigation, it's the transfer transfer of risk essentially, and it's risk management. And so that is always important because one of the things that I think that we tend to do in our society is not have any type of risk management. There's always the social media, people's social media, they always say don't have a plan B. Now I will say if you don't have a plan B, you will probably get to where you need to go to faster because you really don't have a fucking option. But point being is, is that having a plan A and having a plan B is what hedging is. And that's the same thing as having life insurance or insurance in general, because you are hedging or, well, it's not the same thing as insurance because in insurance, you're transferring risk. So with the hedging though, I guess with hedging and investing, you're kind of transferring the risk. But point being is that, is that when you do that, you have other options available to you to help soften different blows or different outcomes that happen to you inside of a situation. Like if I have fire insurance and there's a fire that grow, goes out, happens, that small amount of money that I've been paying every month for my fire protection insurance will help me in the event that I need to have fire protection. And one of the things that that took me a while when I was coming up in financial services industry to get over was that I was always on the assumption that the insurance companies were already trying to fuck you. And that's not really the case because every situation where I've had my insurance and I've understood my insurance and I followed the insurance things that needed to happen and something happened, I have always been taken care of with my insurance, like car insurance, that's the, my house insurance that I used to have on it, my warranty insurance, I think it's called a warranty. Um, but so my point is, is that 
insurance can be very, very beneficial in lots of different ways. And that is something that's always fascinated me. Um, but I've never gotten into it because again, I always get pulled in lots of different directions. And now I'm getting really trying to get really, really good at saying, no, this is what I'm going to be focusing on. And so with that, we decided to build our own insurance group through Freedom Asset Management. And I will branch mine off through Q Financial, which I guess we all own all the same stuff. So I guess it all makes all of us wealthy, I suppose. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the type of insurance we're selling because we're, 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 I, I guess I'm selling, I'm not going to speak for other people. So the type of insurance that I'm currently selling, and this is just the beginning is the life insurance. And so I'm a life insurance producer. And so I have lots of aspirations in this financial insurance field that I'm trying to get organized and trying to focus on. But the first one is really focused on creating one life insurance agents that are agents of us. And now we're going through another group called Pinnacle and World Financial Group, which kind of works very similar um, to to a hierarchical multi-level marketing model, but just just from so usually I would say, I'm going to be honest with you. There are things that work really good in that model. And there are things that work really, really of what things that I don't think work really, really well in that model. What I can say that's going to work really, really well in our model is we have the ability to create the processes that we need to build this with from within ourselves. And then we no longer need that type of, I guess, I guess it will still always flow up to that, but we have the capacity to build the business the way that we need. And this is just the beginning of what my long-term strategy and plan is. But so the benefits of the insurance and the main insurance vehicle that we have been selling is the index universal, um, uh, life insurance, which people refer to as leverage life insurance. It's a type of cash value life insurance and cash values are, um, uh, usually associated with what are called whole life insurance or endowment life insurance and other forms of permanent life insurance. So the contract determines for each possible cancellation date that relate the, I'm sorry, the contract determines for each possible cancellation date, the related cash value. So essentially as you're paying your premium, uh, you're building the premium to pay for the death benefit, right? Cause it's life insurance. And then you're also building up a cash value inside of that, that is traditionally indexed to say the S and P 500. So if the S and, and so when the, when the S and P 500 goes up, your cash value grows with that. And the benefit of this is these things, these things grow essentially tax free inside of them. So what we see a lot now is a lot of these product, these policies or these, this IUL insurance, it's made a lot of a big comeback because of the tax, the tax benefits of it, but they've been repackaged a little bit to be like a, a retirement piece. But Inside of the index universal life insurance, which is really, really beneficial, is there can be an investment piece to help with retirement, one. And two, you can also have legacy built into it because of the death benefit. And so when you hear legacy, that traditionally means that like, well, what it means is not like (laughs) what it does mean is that if I have $700,000 that goes to my family when I die, that helps that generation grow. And so lots of wealthy families, every, everybody inside of most wealthy families, it, when they're really smart, when it has to do with insurance is that every person is worth a new million dollars or a new $2 million upon their death. And so what that does is it creates a snowball ability for a family over multiple, multiple generations to become very, very wealthy. And this is something that we don't think about. We don't talk about, we don't teach to everybody, right? It's usually, and and the reason why, and this is why I try not to get, I have no problem with the education, the education that we do inside of our schooling. I mean, there's lots of things that I have problems with, but when I say the things that we teach them, I, these things don't necessarily need to be taught to them, but they need to be taught to people. And we need to do a better job figuring out how we're going to do that as a community. Because a lot of the reasons why wealthy people learn about this stuff is because wealthy people have access to more educated people. Like in banks, they have private banking, they have billionaire banking <laughs> firm firms that exist within it, right? So there were like different tiers of private banking inside of Wells Fargo. And so... And so those people have the knowledge of these things because the people that are there are professionals and they're educated and they're sharing their education with their people. And so, and so the thing, the the problem is, is that these things need to be taught to everybody. And so that's probably better for a different discussion 
with different people <laughs> at a different place in time. But so the way the life insurance works is you have the death benefit, you have the cash value. What's great about the cash value in an indexed universal um, life insurance policy is that you can borrow against the cash that's inside of it. And when you borrow against it, you usually don't pay the principal. I said, usually it's not every company don't. I'm just saying traditionally, you may not pay the principal back because it's paid out of the death benefit upon your death. If you wanted to pay it back, you could and build that cash value up. What you usually end up paying is an interest rate fee. And that interest rate is traditionally taken off of the interest that's earned in the cash value portion of the index. So theoretically, you could be borrowing the money that's been growing. You don't have to pay taxes on any of that growth inside of it because it's a insurance. It's an insurance vehicle, right? And 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 I'm sorry, not because it's insurance vehicle, because you're borrowing it to yourself. So you're borrowing that money, right? So because it's debt, you don't owe any taxes on that growth that was created inside the vehicle um, because you're not actually taking the money out of the vehicle, the life insurance. Okay. And so, and then the interest payment comes off of whatever the index was. Now, if for instance, the index goes down, if the S and P 500 had a really bad year that year, right? So let's say it had an 8% year, your interest rate on your loan was 2%. They take that 2% off of your 8% and you get 6% back. If the S&P went zero or negative, and this isn't going to be for all policies, but if it went zero or negative, then you would have to pay whatever that interest rate was on the amount that you did, right? So essentially you are paying kind of on your own money, but it's being coming out of the vehicle. So it doesn't affect your cash position. And that's the, the real goal here is to not affect your actual cash position in the situation, or that's one of the goals. Okay. And then when you pass away, the people get the death benefit and the cash value that's available at that point in time. Um, and so, so that's, that's really, really, it's a really, really powerful vehicle. Um, and that's one of the ones that I want to start with because I think that we do not in any way whatsoever talk about, we don't have serious real conversations about these types of things because one, people are always trying to sell it. So if we go on to social media, there's all kinds of people that are selling IUL right now. Okay. Because it's just, that's how the cycles go. So it, IUL was popular then VUL was popular and then IUL is not popular again. And then something else will become popular because this will become boring and someone else will think of something else and they'll market it differently. And that's just how stuff goes. Okay. And so when they're telling you about it, their goal for the most part is to get you to sign up to buy the insurance. Okay. And that would be my goal too, if I were being a seller of the insurance. But also as an educator, it's also important that we have a real conversation about how the ins and outs of all this stuff work. Because there are problems with all things. And the more realistic we are about problems with these things, the better people can be educated with it. And then there's not any misinformation that's going around about what's going on. Um, and so that's why one of the reasons why I wanted to talk about this was because you need to, well, one, you need to have some type of life insurance that goes for everybody just because of the fact that there's debts that need to be paid when you freaking die. That's the first part. The second part is because it's pulled money, essentially, you have a better capacity to have more money to pass on when you pass away because of the death benefits that exist within life insurance policies. And so that's the, the second great reason is because when you die, a bunch of people get a bunch of money tax free and then they can continue to utilize that money and do what they need to do with that money, whether it's pay off debt or to have it to start businesses or to give to their communities or build something amazing in their community or run for office or whatever the case is. So at the, at the end of the day, everybody should have some type of life insurance policy that's not term. The reason why permanent life insurance policy, even if, even if the cash value wasn't there and it was just a permanent as opposed to term life insurance, which you have to re-up every term, but it's called term life insurance, kind of like with what you do with a car or a vehicle or a boat or a fire or whatever, maybe not with fire. Yeah, I guess you do with fire. Um, so I'm on a really big fire insurance kick just because, well, lots of reasons. So eventually I will sell fire insurance. I just want everybody to know that <laughs> fire insurance, not file insurance. Okay. And so, um, and so, 
So even if it was a, a permanent life insurance, you would never have to worry about terming it out, up again. And you would always be secured in the event that you passed away and there would always be a death benefit. So so one of the things though that I that I am that that the the one of the things I like stock I like owning stocks and I like buying the stocks, right? So when when you have something that's indexed to it, your it's just growing based off of it. But you don't have any real equity in the thing that's going on. Now, most of us won't have enough equity for it to have any um, any any like it for it to matter for the amount of stock that you have, right? Like to have a a, a large enough amount of Microsoft to have any impact whatsoever, or even the right type of shares to have the type of voting impact you're probably not going to get in, in, in if you're just buying like, I don't know, one share every month or every quarter. Okay. Now with, so I like stocks, but then with the index, you don't own anything. It's just indexed against it. And the way that the life insurance company gives is they're probably investing in something that's growing with that. And then they put that into your account um, and so forth and so forth. As I learn and dive deeper into that piece, I will share it with you because that is always my goal is to be transparent with everybody as possible. But I will say this. If your goal, if your goal is to have money to pass on to your children for legacy, okay, one or your family or whatever, and your goal, and you don't care about anything other than the the money growing in time, so you have it, right? When you can, because because essentially to have it to borrow against, or you can surrender it and get that cash value out. I mean, I'm not going into all of the features of how it all works, but essentially, essentially, if your goal is to have that money to be able to borrow against and have it, and you have that goal of having that death benefit then there is no real reason why not to have an index universal life insurance policy. Now it is a life insurance policy. So you have to go through, make sure you're healthy and all that stuff because the, the insurance company is taking on that risk. But if those are the two things that you want, there is no real reason why you shouldn't at least have an index universal life insurance policy, right? It doesn't need to be the whole plan. It can be a part of the plan, right? Um, uh, and so, so it's really, really important to kind of think about it because no one's, because the one thing that I think that people have is that everything is a scam and none of this is a real scam. It's just, is it the right thing for you? And if you follow all of the requirements from the insurance company, then it will be really, really, really beneficial for you. Uh, so I think that that's something to really, really think about. Um, and again, we have our insurance team. You can definitely join our insurance team. Um, I would prefer you be part of the three, two Academy and join it because we have this group that's in there it works really, really well. Um, you can go CJV talks about it much more on his social media. So you can go check out his social media, or you can do the seven day free trial, jump inside of our three, two Academy join one of our Thursday wealth calls or at least one Thursday wealth call. We talk about a lot of the stuff that we have going on because we have all kinds of stuff going on and it might be beneficial for you to get the life insurance policy because, you, uh, because the other benefit hole, and this is one of the biggest benefits. I don't know how I forgot about it is that usually there's a floor. So what I mean by that is that you can't lose more than a certain amount of money. Most of them are going to be like zero, like zero. And what I mean by that is if the S and P 500 goes below zero, and that you don't lose money as you otherwise would if you were investing in something. So you don't lose money because it flattens out at that zero. Now, that being said, lots of them, some of them have caps. Okay. I said lots of them, but I don't know. Some of them have caps where it can't go over a certain amount. So what that means, let's say the S&P 500 has like a fantastic year and it goes up, I don't know, 25%. You can only have say 15%. And that's one of the other ways in which the life insurance company, right? Because they use math and actuary. Well, they probably don't use actuary for this, but they use math to figure out what's going to be the best benefit for them overall. And that's why they do those types of things because it still needs to benefit them. They still need to have a profit to either pay their shareholders or have a surplus so they can pay their um, uh, policy holders. And that's when it's a mutual like life insurance company. So just if you take the time to really understand it and see how these things can play into your over financial picture, they're super beneficial. And so if you want to learn more about this, again, 
There, I'll put a link in my episode description. It'll take you over to a Freedom Asset Management Group form. You'll fill that out. You can sit and talk with one of the people that are part of our um, team, and eventually you'll be able to sit with me and talk to me about it. And I think that it should be a part of everybody's um, financial picture. That being said, am I going to sell all of my stock to get into a life insurance policy? No, of course not, because I enjoy having York. I enjoy having Microsoft. I enjoy having Adobe. And there are, again, I have a plan in place and this is just one piece of that plan. So that's the way that I, I that's the reason why I'm sharing this with you. It's because one, I, I want to take the myst- mystique away from it, right? Because people are trying to sell it to us all the time now on social media. One, two, want to have a real conversation about the benefits, how it works, what it is, because I feel that if we know more and we understand more, we can make much better decisions, right? Because people are always trying to sell stuff to us too. And then three, if you do want to learn more about it, you can talk to one of our agents. And if they seem whatever, however they seem, you reach out to me on Snapchat, you reach out to me on Mighty Networks if you're part of the Academy, and I have no problem talking with you about it. Because again, that's what my goal is, is to bring transparency, understanding around financial services so everybody can benefit and not just the wealthy people can benefit from it. I'm not, again, I'm not I'm not one of the people that are like the elites are eating children and trying to take over the world. That's not my, that's not my place. What I'm saying is that there is a difference between education and knowledge from wealthy people because of how we perceive them and how we help them that don't happen to middle-class individuals and um, lower-class individuals. And that is the goal of what I want to change in this world. Okay. So Remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind. There will be a link in the episode description. Again, you can see these on YouTube. So you might be watching it on YouTube. If you're watching it on YouTube, you can listen to these wherever you get your podcasts. Um, and again, remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind. I will talk with you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to The Age of Jeremy. If you like this podcast, please give it a five-star rating if your podcatcher allows you to. If you could share it with some people on social media, that would be fantastic as well. I like using Neumann microphones. I use a Zoom L8 for my soundboard. I like Waves plugins, and I record on Steinberg's Cubase. The opening song was Brave Faces Everyone by Spanish Love Songs. The closing song was Threatening Each Other, Recapitalism by Illuminati Hotties and... One more time, remember, be thankful, grateful, and kind. We'll talk to you next time.